got to focus on uh, focus crab on cakes. something else. You know what? Yeah, thank we're, you. We're just, we're gonna keep, we'll roll through. We'll, we'll roll through. We're yeah. just going to keep yeah, going? Yeah, let's roll through. We're with Governor Larry Hogan. We're down here at the boatyard. They have brought these we need some. legendary wow. crab oh, cakes out Those are good-looking <laughs> crab cakes here at the boatyard. <laughs> well, I got mashed potatoes and green beans here. That's I, I'm nice. A, I'm a sides guy. There's some, uh, there's some tartar sauce here. But uh, yeah. c- c- <laughs> continuing the conversation, yeah. this is the best part of Maryland. No this question. Is. Well, <laughs> you can't go <laughs> wrong with uh, – <laughs> with crab ca- Maryland crab cakes, but uh, I can tell fabulous. you the, their boatyard knows how to do it right. So, Governor, why we'll dig in, what's your thought about uh, ramping up the whole parole and probation yeah, and well, follow-up and trying to make a yeah, difference that yeah, way? Again, we hired uh, 228 additional parole and probation officers in Baltimore City. We put them in every single precinct, so they're in there with the police every day. Uh, you know, the, Only the police can do the arresting. Um, and the parole and po- probation are, are the ones that are following up on where people are. The problem is they're paroling and, and uh, giving probation to far too many people. So there's thousands of people all over Baltimore City, uh, many of whom should be in jail instead of on probation. They keep jumping probation. They keep cutting off ankle bracelets. And they keep going out and committing crimes. Well, as a citizen, I don't Everybody, want them on the street. It's not up to the parole and probation right. to arrest them. Yeah. Uh, they just try to keep track of them. But uh, it's, uh, you know, one, one of the mayors, you know, I've said, I think, I th- I think I've been my fourth mayor now, but one of them early on, I guess it was maybe Stephanie Rawlings Blake uh, uh, kicked uh, all of the guys out of the city, and so the parole and probation officers weren't working directly with the police. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, Mayor Pugh came in, and she agreed to let us send them back. So we put 228 parole and probation officers directly just into Baltimore City. We put more money into that, but that's not the problem. Uh, that that's a scape. They're, they're using that as a scapegoat. Like, well, this is really the state's job because these guys are on probation. Well, no, it's a problem because they're not getting arrested, they're not getting uh, prosecuted, and they're not taking them off the streets. And uh, then they're that's that's you know we can't babysit everybody oh, when they're not in jail. We uh, a multitude. Go ahead, Governor, dig in there. Well, yeah. while you do, go ahead and ask. No, go ahead, hit him, I was going to say it's going to be hard to eat a crab go, cake while we're talking. No, about no, it. no, no, man, no, look at the ahead. steam coming off these. Uh, crab we'll work cakes. it out. Mm. We'll work it out. That's pretty darn good, isn't wow. it? Wow. The boatyard in Annapolis. We're going to be talking with the owner in a little while. So I'm afraid to touch it because it's going to mess it up. The, how pretty it, <laughs> it is! It's pretty. <laughs> Stay it's, tuned. It's worth messing it up, though. Trust me. Stay tuned for that. Oh, we got we got water coming up here. There we go. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Go- Governor. It's hard. Yeah, you know, I always say the older we, the older I get, the faster time flies. It's amazing to me that your two terms are about to come to an end. What, you know, I, think you're, you look cut, I think you're cutting me short. I have like <laughs> a, almost a year and a half left, and everybody's <laughs> kicking me to the curb. I have people saying, so what are you doing now? They're well, laying down. I'm like, talking to people trying to get your job. Yeah, every, everybody wants the job, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell them that uh, I'm still going to be in the job until the end of January of 2023. So, you're so gonna, this, you're, is, <laughs> this is only 21. <laughs> you're going to keep the pedal to the metal. When yeah. you look back, though, Governor, as you eat this great crab cake and you think about it, what are you the most proud of? that you've accomplished in those six. And when you look back to goals that you had in yep. the beginning and you're, you're sitting with family and friends, you say, on, I feel good about that. What is it? Well, so there's only one reason I ran for governor. You know, I'm a small businessman who never held elective office before, and I really didn't want to be governor. I was just really frustrated with what was happening to our state, and it's what motivated me. People thought I was crazy. You can't possibly elect a Republican. The guy's never held office. You know, they Don didn't. told me that when I thought about running for mayor of Baltimore. <laughs> it's exactly I what he told you. Me. See, win. you can do it. I think you might. What be made able you to... believe? So I, I was just frustrated. I, I was. Uh, what? Here's what happened. Uh, the previous governor uh, raised taxes 43 times in a row. It caused us to lose more than 10,000 businesses and almost 200,000 jobs. And then a poll came out. Uh, that, that was a Gallup poll that said 48 percent of all the people in Maryland wanted to move. There was a mass exodus. We had the seventh largest exodus of taxpayers out of the state. People were like, I'm going anywhere. I'm going to move south. I'm going to Virginia. I'm going to Delaware. I'm going to South Carolina. I'm moving to Florida. Can't take it anymore. And as a lifelong Marylander, that broke my heart, and that's why I ran. So I said, you know, that we were going to try to turn that around, even though, you know, I'm a Republican in a state that has a 70% Democratic legislature who had, you know, voted to increase all those taxes, that we were going to try to turn that around. We were going to be unabashedly pro-business and pro-jobs and help small businesses like this one here. Uh, in my inaugural address, I said Maryland is open for business, and then we tried to make that a reality by making the government try to work with people. To, uh, uh, how can we help you rather than how can we hurt you? Um, I stopped every single tax increase for seven years. I cut taxes seven years in a row. When I ran for governor, Maryland's overall economic performance was 49th out of 50 states. 
We moved to number six in the country. was the biggest economic turnaround in America. We have more businesses open and more people working than ever before in, in the history of the state. And that's what I'm most proud of. There are a lot of things I'm proud of. We have a great team that's done a lot. But because that's the thing that made me want to run is what I said I was going to focus on and is what we delivered on. So the flip side of that, the flip side of that, and I know every elected official that I've ever known yeah. always also leaves with some regrets or if I just had a little more time. When yeah. you look back also at those. He still has a year and a half, by the way. I know he's going to say that. Six he's and a he's half. chewing. He's, but kick, he's right. kicking me out. That's all right. <laughs> what, what's been the most frustrating part about being governor? <clears throat> Maybe it's not regrets about we didn't get that. What's yeah. been the most frustrating part about being the governor of the state of Maryland? Well, you know, I think the most frustrating thing is, is also, you know, I, look, I, I was very happy to have worked with the legislature, even though we're different parties and we sometimes disagree. I've tried my best to find that middle ground, a common ground, and figure out, you know, sometimes people agree on the problem but a different solution. I don't care about Republican, Democrat stuff. I just want to try to get things done for the people. The biggest frustration the thing that I'm most disappointed about is that uh, we're, we, we are the worst state in, in the country to retire in uh, because of massive, uh, onerous retirement taxes and estate taxes and uh, death taxes. And, uh, you know, we I try to eliminate all retirement taxes in Maryland, which many other states have done. Because Tell every, folks what you mean by retirement taxes. Well, they so, may not know when they're listening. Well, so people are, you know, when you're, when you're, you're, any of your income on your retirement accounts, when you stop working, you got, you know, pensions coming in, you got money coming off your 401k, that we're taxing the hell out of it here in the state. And so I, I, did, I did nip at the edges of it. I got the legislature to, to cut uh, retirement taxes for some people a little bit, like five times. But I wanted to eliminate them so we could be as competitive as some of the other states. And we haven't been able to get that done. It, it's, it is the biggest problem. It's why we're losing people. And some of the best and brightest people who spent their life. I hear people say, you know, I've spent my whole life here and I don't want to leave. I love Maryland, but, I, you know, and I don't want to leave my kids and grandkids, but I can't afford to stay here on a fixed income. I know lots and lots of people that have established residency and work hard yeah. to make sure they're spending their 180 whatever day yeah. in Florida, in Delaware, yeah, wherever absolutely. it is. And if the government comes knocking, hey, you know, I, I'm not a Maryland resident anymore. Yeah. Look at my license plate. Look at my driver's license. Yeah. I'm 53. I've been blessed enough to be around people that have had some success in life, you yeah. know. And it is a problem. I mean, and, and well, that's, that's a purple issue, not a red or a no, blue it's issue, not. right? And, it's, and there's two things going on. At the, the, the higher income folks are doing exactly what you said. They, they're like, I can afford, when they raised the taxes on them and they thought we were going to get more revenue, they got less revenue because lots of millionaires moved out of the state. They didn't really. They're still here. They spent six months in Florida in their residence down there or Colorado or wherever the heck they, Delaware, when they have a place sure. in Bethany Beach or or Rehoboth. I talk to Leonard Raskin about that all the time, one of my so sponsors. <laughs> lots yes. and lots of people have done that. But it's also not the people that are wealthy that don't can't afford to have a, a place. It's, it's people that are on a fixed income, on a pension, that just say, I can't afford to stay here because they're taking too much of my paycheck. $500 and a cost, month will uh, meet more right, than me in Florida, right? right? right. So I'm concerned yeah. about all of the retirees. I don't want to lose the, the, the hardworking folks that don't want to leave their kids and grandkids that are on a fixed income. I also don't want to lose the folks that are – do all the contributing and the donating to the charitable causes that support all the things that will help make us a better state. They're now doing it in Florida or somewhere else. You know, they're not, well, well, not, Governor, not contributing here anymore, and they wanted to. Your, your message, I mean, is clearly, you know, whether, you know, I disagree with some points of the policy I don't or see not. how you could disagree, Doc. <laughs> but the point, I'm about I spend to, time with him, I Governor, do. Governor, <laughs> but I'm about, to, I'm, about, I'm about to compliment you, and I'm going to say that your message – has resonated across Maryland, not only with Republicans, but with Democrats and independents. Now, here's, here's my question, and here's what we grapple with. We've had Barry Glassman on recently. We've had Michael Steele on recently, all good friends of yours. And now you're sitting here I with I sat us. with Rick Meehan down Ocean City. I mean, you, 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 sure. The all three good guys. of you represent a brand of the Republican Party that seems to me is increasingly rare. So my question is, how do the Larry Hogan's, the Michael Steele's, the Barry Glassman's reclaim this party yeah. without being kicked to the curb? Well, that's a great uh, question. You know, I'm very concerned about that. For, uh, first of all, on your first comment about Republicans, Democrats, and independents, that's something I'm really proud of. Uh, you know, when I ran 
for governor. Only 24% of the people in the state are Republican. And I said, in order to win, I was going to have to get every Republican, nearly every independent, and a whole bunch of discerning Democrats right. that were willing to cross over, even though they maybe had never voted for a Republican before. And that's what we did. I built a group called Change Maryland, largest nonpartisan citizen organization in straight state history. I had the Republicans, but also just as many Democrats and independents. How we won Baltimore County so overwhelmingly, how we won, you know, almost all over the state. It's how, uh, you know, I, I, I won more votes than any Democrat or Republican in history and uh, was reelected in a tough state, the bluest state in America, in a big blue year with a big blue wave, and I won by, you know, 14 points uh, against a tough candidate. Um, I think there is – look, I, I think uh, you're right. My party is – there are a lot of folks are moving in a direction where we're turning off wide swaths of, swaths of voters – this past I mean, you and Glassman and Steele aren't comfortable with that wing of the party that's going down a rabbit hole, right? No, well, I, no I'm very concerned. about. I want to return to a more traditional Republican Party, a more, you know, I, I got started as a young guy in Reagan's campaign and, uh, you know, a more Reagan-esque party where we tried to he, – he won over Reagan Democrats. He tried to appeal to a broader audience. Um, I, I think, you know, successful politics is about addition and multiplication, not subtraction and division. We've been doing a lot of subtracting and dividing and fighting. Both parties are guilty, frankly, of that going in, in uh, extremes. But most Americans and most Marylanders are somewhere in the middle. They're, they're moderates or they're right of center, left of center. They're not on the extremes. And they really just want – they don't care if somebody's a Republican or a Democrat. They want them to work together to solve problems. And that's what's not, sa- not happening. Everybody's just scoring points and calling names and pointing fingers and you know, worrying about their Twitter accounts as opposed to figuring out how we're going to fix things. All right, so I think it's very popular. So – you know, uh, you know there are there, right now there are a whole lot of people that want to go off the cliff, uh, but there are a lot of us that are concerned about taking us back where we should be. And I, you know, I think the Democratic Party has the same issue. I mean, frankly, uh, you know, AOC and uh, Bernie and far left stuff is not where the Democratic Party should be. So I think both parties have to do a little soul but there's searching. There's a difference, <laughs> but yeah, Governor, I'm going to push back on that while you dig into the crab cake. Yeah, please. Because my Republican friends always, always want to try to beat me up over Bernie and AOC and Elon Omar, and I always push back on them and saying, here's the big difference. They didn't prevail yeah. in an election. Yeah. The dark side of your party did prevail. Well, that, that, to me, seems different. Well, they did once, and then they failed at everything. So mm-hmm. my point is we've never had a worse four years for the Republican Party. Donald Trump lost the presidency, the Senate – the House, he lost governor's races across the country and state legislative bodies. So if people want to double down on failure, then they want to keep heading in that direction. Uh, but I think a, there's a whole lot of people that would like to return to uh, the way things used to be. And Why we, aren't we, we you can't, afraid? We, we can't win. Uh, you know, we're never going to be a competitive. Look, I right. really believe in – I am a re- lifelong Republican, but I really believe in the competitive two-party system. I think it's great for our Democratic Republican – we're not going to the Republican Party is not going to be competitive if they keep, you know, I was able to win over a huge percentage of black voters, Hispanic voters, Asian voters, uh, suburban women, uh, you know, people crossing parties. You know, you know, I'm not to, I'm not touting my own horn, but I have the highest approval rating of any governor or any elected official in the country as a result of that. So I think it is popular. Well, well you know, you're you, you know where you know what you're going to get out of this, right, Governor? You're going to get a nickname. So I'm going to ask you. OK, I don't know if it's low energy Jeb <laughs> or Lion Ted, yeah. but it's going to be something Larry. Yeah. And, and why aren't everybody Maybe crab else? Cake Larry, this is a pretty oh, there you go. There you crab go. Crab cake Larry. Larry. I like that. We're everybody go with that. else, everybody almost yeah. in your party is afraid of the nickname and the tweet. Why the hell aren't you afraid of being called out on – well, you can't be on Twitter yeah. now or whatever <laughs> the vehicle will be. Look, Why aren't you afraid of the nickname? Yeah, I couldn't care less about that. I mean, look, I, uh, I don't like that kind of politics. I didn't like all the name calling. You never saw me call the president names. I, I pushed back. I was one of the few Republicans willing to stand up when I thought when – when I disagreed. But I never was petty about it. And he also never get, get called me a name. It didn't really – Not one, yet. I'm one of the few Republicans he didn't right. criticize. Right. Maybe Chris Christie and I are the only guys he didn't attack. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's no question we're different kinds of people. I'm not afraid of it. Look, I was a successful governor when he was a talk show host. Uh, uh, you know, he had a you know, failed TV show. And, uh, you know, he, he became president. Uh, now he's not. 
Um, you know, I'm a two-term governor and have the best record in America. So uh, he can call me whatever he wants. Well, how do you, well, how do you, do you agree? Oh, you know, you know, I, agree I, can, I can tell you this. Before it, you know, there are, he always talks about you know calling people losers. Well, I'm the guy that keeps winning, and he's the one that keeps losing. <laughs> I, I want to get crab cakes here before because we have five okay. minutes left with you. Crab cakes are oh. good. Fried really good. or broiled? Give me a profile on a crab cake for you yeah. because. I've been eating these my whole life, and tra- this is my 40th and 41st crab cake That's awesome. in 30 days in 24 ca- 23 counties in the city. There's an Eastern Shore style. Yeah. There's a Baltimore style. There's True. a pan fried. Yeah. There's a deep fried, and there's this delicate right, we have here at the boat yard in Annapolis. This jumbo lump crab meat, an yeah. amazing crab right, cake. Right, right, right. So uh, look. Any Maryland crab cake is going to be good, right? I'll tell people around the country, you can't get a crab cake anywhere else. It's as good as being here in Maryland. Uh, I'm going to be bipartisan on my crab cakes, too, because I love jumbo lump crab cakes, and broiled jumbo lump is is healthier and really delicious. But there's, you know, a fried crab cake with it doesn't even have to be all jumbo lump. There's different styles. I would say they're all good. So uh, this is a terrific one here. We have great ones at the governor's mansion because we have to show off Maryland when we – bring folks in uh there's a lot of places did you have to Every, prove everybody that? does it differently did you have to prove the governor's crab cake when they come in no but i, I ate them right i was like this is awesome you know so i well i didn't have to change it at okay, all but, I, I, but i'll eat i'll eat them all so if it's fried um you know i'll throw a little cocktail sauce on it if it's uh you know this broiled is like here. this well, i'll do it with nothing or just a little tartar so we we promised your team and we we want to get you back so we don't want to wait make don't your kick team me in. out before I no no my keep crab eating cake. your crab cake as you're digging into the second crab cake um you, I joked and you joked back a little bit about your, your plans. There certainly is uh, a lot of buzz about you taking a look at a presidential campaign. What will – I don't expect you to announce yeah. today on Baltimore Pines. Be, I'll break the news today. Right. That would be good if you want to do it. But what will go into the decision, Governor? What, what will you try to be analyzing well, look, I, there, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm, I'm really flattered that people keep saying that. I was at the golf tournament yesterday, and people are chanting, you know, like, uh, you know, Hogan, Hogan, we want you to run for president. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm just – And you didn't even make a putt. I didn't even have to putt. <laughs> It's the good thing, too. They might have been booing me after that. But, uh, you know, I've never expressed any desire to run for president. I'm flattered people talk about it. I do care about what we, we were just talking about, about getting my party back on track. I care very much about the direction of the country. So, I, you know, I'm, I've just said I'm going to do the best job I can as Maryland governor. I hate when people look at the next job. They focus on something else. I have almost 18 months left. I'm going to run through the tape. i got a lot more to get done. I, I think – being the best governor I can be, uh, and then in, in, in 23, you know, after I'm uh, unemployed, you know, I can think about what my next job is, and if there's an opportunity, then we'd certainly consider it. Well, I mean, do I, do, wanna... I do think there's probably 10 people that, w- back to your other question, there's probably 10 people that want to be the next Donald Trump, right. maybe 15. Uh, there's a wide open lane right now. There's about 40% of the people that don't want that, and, uh, you know, that I, I can't think of anybody else – in that lane right now. So, uh, you know, it's something to think about. Well, you had to be in that lane to, to be on that <laughs> side of the ticket. Somewhere. Last thing for you, let you go, because you mentioned Reagan, and I it told everybody when you voted for Reagan or famously voted for Reagan, I, I was going to ask why you did that. So, so the first time, um, I really did not like uh, almost anything that the pres- President Trump was saying or doing in his campaign. I voted for my dad because – he was the kind of uh, Republican that I admired and thought we should have. It was symbolic. doesn't matter. I mean, he lost Maryland by 30 points. It's not like I determined the election. Right. In the second race, I'd, again, symbolically uh, cast my vote, which is why they allow you to do write-ins just for that purpose. Um, again, Trump lost thir- by 30 points in Maryland, so my vote didn't matter. But I wanted to say, you know, this is the kind of Republican Party we need to return to, and I'm very proud of both of those votes. Um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't going to be like, you know, you, te- you said you had Michael Steele on. You know, he went and supported Joe Biden. I, I wasn't – I didn't really think either candidate was the best candidate we had from, for the Democrats. Or but the that's Republicans. the only so choice you, you have, feel, though. No, it's that's not the only choice. Say, you, get to, you get to vote for whoever you want, which is why we have a write-in ballot, and hundreds of thousands of people do the same thing, including – uh, all the Bushes and uh, a number of other governors and a lot of other people wrote people in. That's why we have that. So you really, ability. it was really a protest vote. You were saying, I'm, I'm not liking either of these choices. Not really a protest. It was, uh, you know, it was a, more of a symbolic gesture of what I thought uh, was more important. Let, Nestor had that question. I have a last question, too, then. You talked about 
uh, whether you like it or not, uh, with with the amount of months left, it is a, a lame duck sense. But yet you said, hey, I've still got things I want to get done. Yeah. Give us a preview. What are what are a couple of those things that you haven't done yet? You want to say, I want to work with the legislature to get it done? Yeah, I don't really see myself as a lame duck, and I don't really see uh, most of what we accomplish as being done in the legislature. So, uh, you know, some people, they, they want to pass a lot of laws and change a lot of things. I, I, don't, I don't think we need any more legislation. So my focus has been on the executive branch. All the things I talked about, all of our accomplishments, we were able to pretty much do on our own. Now, we're working 365 days out of the year. The legislature is part-time. It comes in for 90 days. They try to pass a lot of things, many of which I veto or some of, some of which I will why support did, or make that, better. Well, speaking of that, why But all the stuff veto? we get done is, I, you know, I run a $50 billion a year corporation with 90,000 employees. Getting legislation passed is not my top priority. It's just making Maryland a better place to live and, and work and retire and do business. And the next 18 months are going to be just as successful as the first, uh, you know, six and a half years. And w- hopefully we will get some things done with the legislature. But we're going to keep, uh, keep trying to put more people back to work, tr- keep trying to help our businesses. Tr- you know, we have massive improvements in transportation. We're, you know, we're building the largest P3 highway project in North America, largest transit system in North America. We're building – going to build the American Legion Bridge into Virginia. We're going to fix the Capitol Beltway. We're fixing 695. Uh, we have 900 projects, totally $9 billion in infrastructure. Uh, you know, we're just going to keep uh, making Maryland a better place to live. I, when I leave, uh, you know, I want people to say that we did a good job, and I want people to point and say that got done and that got done, and we built all these 21st century schools. We fixed all these roads. We built bridges. We built transit systems. Well, we're going to let the governor eat. We promised to get him out of here on time. i got a million more questions. I'll say this. I've been, I, 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 I don't know, by. 600 miles on the road in 30 days, back and forth in yeah. all sorts of directions. This is really a beautiful state. Yeah. Like, I, that, that's the thing that I have said to everyone. It is From, from the eastern shore out to western Maryland. It's, it's, you got to see more than you probably have ever done. Well, it was a bucket list thing for me to yeah. do things I had never done. I made Smith Island cake with Mary Ada down wow. in Tylerton. You know, I, I Did saw, you get to eat it after you made it? Oh, you know, I yeah. still have a piece you of it. it by the the I brought it for Don's 50th anniversary <laughs> last week. He did. Nice. Yeah, so You, you thank brought him you. a piece? You should have got him a whole cake. He no, brought me a piece. You know, he brought he, me a piece. He's cutting down. You know, he's trying to. He's just cutting down. But thanks to your team and to Kiefer and everybody here who made this happen. Governor, point out that Thanks, uh, Don Carmen. ate one whole crab cake. Uh, you ate uh, like no, a bite. No, 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 I ate, no, no, I ate no, no. One and we're three having quarters Dick on, and we're going to talk about his crab okay. cakes here. Is yeah, what yeah, yeah. Do okay. When you get well, you know, Dick might want to try one of his own crab cakes. They're pretty darn good. But I want to thank you guys very much for the opportunity. It's been great thank seeing you, you both and talking with you. And I want to thank the Boat Yard. This is a wonderful restaurant in Annapolis. I know we're all about Baltimore positive, but, uh, you know, Annapolis positive. We're a suburb of Baltimore. You can well, go right down there and get you. a I've become <laughs> Cumberland positive, Oakland <laughs> yeah, positive, right. Cambridge positive. We're Maryland positive. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate uh, you, Governor. Thank you yeah. so Governor much. Governor Larry Hogan joining us here with the Boat did. Yard. He's onward and upward. Don Muller, former Baltimore County executive. All of our coverage of Ravens continuing on. We're in Annapolis with more right after this.